Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here in the Shard in London for a really exciting press conference here with Perkins Engine with the 2600 series. And Alan, you are the main man here that's launched us out today, this brand new <laughs> engine we've got in front of us. Really exciting for all the OEMs out there and it's a real difference for what we've had before in the range from Perkins. So tell me, what have we got here? What's the model name? It's part of that 2016 Terminal series, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So so what we have here is the Perkins 2600 series, a 13 meter engine, uh, max power at 515 kilowatts up to 690 horsepower. I think if you step back and you took a look at this engine, you'll notice that it's a lot simpler. Yeah. And simplicity is what we've been striving for to make our customers' lives a little easier. So if we move over here to this side, starting with what you see here is a fluids module is an example of simplification. But it also has that versatility and configurability that our customers have come to, to love and enjoy. What we've done here is we've combined a whole bunch of different components into a single module. Uh, it serves the function of an oil filter, a water pump, coolant thermostats, oil thermostats. And by designing out all the other components, we're able to simplify their connections and thereby eliminate potential leak joints. Uh, right. And if by if we eliminate those leak joints, then we eliminate potential failure modes, thereby improving the quality of the engine. Yeah. So when you presented the way in which you tackled this, you called this the elephant, you know, as, as a machine, because yes. what you've had to do is use modern technology, modern design techniques to actually look at the flow of everything, the fluids, the fuel, the air, all in that component element yes. to be able to then to take that and compartmentalize it into this, this approach and put things inside here that allow you to do that. Absolutely. How does that really advance Absolutely. the way in which you've designed the engine in, in general? Absolutely. I think what you're describing is full engine solution design. Yeah. And the neat thing about the fluids module and its complexity, because it's moving all the coolant and all the oil, we had to design the cylinder block and the cylinder head all in conjunction together. And if you follow yeah, me over around, here, yeah, yeah. what you'll see is a lot of the components that used to exist out here are now actually built into the block. Right. So this has obviously freed up a lot of room here. And now <laughs> we have the capability of, let's say, mounting a transmission oil cooler right here, which is historically maybe a lot larger in space, but now it can nice, nice and easy, can be tucked right in this space. And the yeah. thing what's really exciting about this is this engine is designed not just for the typical applications, it's designed for the way in which people are bringing future products into the space. Yes. And they're actually looking at how the OEMs that are gonna use this can be more sustainable, can be more integrated into the whole engines and controls That's system. True. So we've got that area where people can bolt things on. We've also yes. got this system here, which is you know designing for future regulations, but yeah. if those don't come, we can take that away, can't we, as well? Yes. That's yes. quite an interesting design concept because it allows you to take one platform and, and deliver it across all of the different tiers across the world, doesn't it? Yes. You're talking about the variable turbocharger. The variable turbocharger is what enables the multiple ratings because the, uh, the turbine fins itself, it moves around and regulates the, the air yep. and that controls the power. This is the reason why we're able to have one single iron set across our entire lineup. And you've also mentioned behind here, what you don't see is an EGR system. Right. And that's if and when the next tier of emissions comes, let's say you stage six or tier five for the US, and we did need, let's say, a EGR system, we've actually designed it so it can be drop-in, which means that the connection points here, here, and here, they don't need to change. They just need to drop something else in behind it, and that's an example of space claim, space protecting for the future. And of course, there's after-treatment systems you'd put on the top yes, of the engine yes. here as well. We've just yes. launched the core element of the engine here. So what we're really saying is that that singular product that spans over the, the, the whole three products you had previously. Sure. So we've gone 15 liter, 18 liter, yeah. and they disappear all of a sudden into a 13 liter yes. engine. 
That is a big step forward when it comes to fuel usage, obviously sustainability, obviously performance has again intensified in there. How have you done it, Alan? How have you <laughs> intensified that performance so you can get that out with less fuel? Uh... Well, let's go over to the other side. Yeah, let's we'll find out uh, from the other side, <laughs> folks. So here we go. So it all comes down to the way in which you are controlling that, that yes, whole system. Yes, exactly. So, so the secret sauce, a lot of this stuff <laughs> is inside the controls. And I, I know that this is just the hardware part of it. Yep. You can see the ECM here. But it works in concert. It works in orchestra with the, the rest of the components, your digital sensors strewn about the uh, engine. All of that is now pulling in real-time data right. from where the engine is situated. Maybe it's on a mountain somewhere, maybe it's in the desert somewhere, but it's actively reading in, in that information. And then we use software algorithms, yep. which you don't see, it's inside yep. the, the controls, to be able to optimize your power, your fuel consumption, all the while meeting emissions. Right, so really what I'm looking at there, folks, is as we change, so we've had seasonal changes forever with engines and things like that, but as we change and go through those different seasons, this engine isn't gonna be smart engine and telling itself, hey, we're getting warmer, hey, we're getting cooler, yeah. we're gonna have to do this, and, and that's yeah. automating that process. So yep. that takes that away from somebody going into those different modes to set it up for you know those different weather and extreme conditions. Yep, that's exactly right. And right, okay, so we've got all the, the smarter engine here now, so it's one engine. <laughs> We've gone from 15 to 18 litre, we're down to 13 litre. Now we're a bit smarter as well, Anne. And, and talk to me about some of the other elements that we've changed uh, within the, the main you know, part of the engine and what people are, are sure. going to see that's different. Sure. We, so let's talk a little bit about the durability of the engine. And what you'll see here, it's pretty uh, inconspicuous, but it's an alternator being mounted onto a cylinder block. However, what made this whole thing possible is the fact that the gear train is now on the rear side of the engine. Previously, we would have a gear train on the front. Right. We would have a big housing to house those gears, and then we would have castings that come off the side to mount these alternators and in, in, uh, refrigerant compressors. Yep. As the engine operates, those things move as well, uh, which as you can imagine, can compromise it, like yeah, the vibrations that leads to right. you know the need to maintain a, an engine yeah. a bit more often because of the way in which those components are moving and, exactly. and vibrating. Yeah. Exactly. And now by moving those gears to the back, now we've freed up this space. We've bolted these components straight to the block, yeah. which will handle those vibrations. And what better to dampen out the the vibrations and noise? than the cylinder block itself. So what we're now saying then, Alan, I'm t interpreting that, that this not only is a smaller engine with more power, but it's also going to be a bit quieter, folks, as well. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Two so, to three dB. Yes. And when you, when, when you put that into context for a machine, when we are putting this into you know, machines that are maybe going to work in inner city spaces or, or places where noise needs to be a consideration, that's yes. really going to make a quite an in, important difference, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You'll be able to audibly hear that, yes. Right. And so when you've got that um, connectivity with the engine and the smart sense, you've got the noise reduction as well, you've got the size reduction, yes. and then you've got this whole one piece of iron, as you said, for the whole of the world and their regulations, <laughs> yes. it really is now into this next phase. This, this is launch now, but you're actually going into the next phase with the OEMs right now, aren't you? Are. Different applications and testing and, and you know developing the, the, that next prototype for, forward, isn't it? Which yes. you'll see in front of us right now. Tell us what's that journey look like? So we're going to be building and putting these engines into uh, real customers' hands in 2024, yep. where they will run in a crew hours just to test out the durability. But a lot of this uh, customer journey is about understanding where they want to be in the future. And um, the new Perkins brand, for example, in general, looks at where they, customers want to take their businesses in, into the future. And this engine is an example of a foundational starting point to whatever journey they're going to be on. For example, if they wanted an alternative fuel, if they wanted uh, a, a hybridized solution, 
this engine will lend itself to be a building block to those types of solutions. So we're having those conversations now with yep, those yep. customers. Yep. And, uh, but there's more to, to be had definitely in the future. And the conversation has been really interesting today, folks, because we've been talking about hydrogen. We've been talking about other, other fuels alternative to the standard diesel and HVO that are coming through. Yes. And we've also been talking about how we do that integration with battery technology and, and with an integrated powertrain. That's so right. it's not just all about the engine now that we see here, Alan. I know you spent a lot of time working <laughs> on it, but it's more than that now, isn't it, that yes, people it are going to do and so we're going to see that developing throughout the products and I'm going to keep in touch with you Alan and to see good. how it all goes but remember folks this is launched today this is the future and no matter what the fuel source no matter what the demands no matter what the changes this is actually going to deliver power at a reduced cost because the fuel is going to be reduced because basically therefore you're not having to put as much in but Alan, the one thing I'll leave and I need a question for is, sure. what about the servicing though? You know, intervals the same as the previous models or so what are we looking at? We're touting up, you won't see the fuel module here today uh, on, this mo um, on this model of the engine, but we're talking 1,000 hours. 1,000 hours. 1,000 hours yeah. for fuel and for oil filter change intervals. Other things we've done underneath the valve cover, we've introduced hydraulic lash adjusters. Right. So you no longer need to service that. And outside, we used to have filters on the side to separate crankcase gases. That's They're actually not. all been built into the valve cover itself. So you no longer need to service that. Lots of quality of life improvements and service improvements to hopefully make it a little easier for our customers. Well, it's certainly been easy to talk about it today with Alan, who's <laughs> been following this through as your baby that you said to us earlier, you know, <laughs> for the last six years. Yes. We're now at that stage where we can see it in the iron, and it's great to talk to you today. Thanks, I'll be Peter. speaking to you in the future, I'm sure. <laughs> Cheers. Good.